16 years, ladies and gentlemen, 16 years ago, Michigan State University gifted to our community jazz, spirituals, prayer, and protest. It's our opportunity to reflect through music the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King. We thank you so much for being here this evening. Some of you might recall in 2014-15, Michigan State University embarked on a year-long conversation on issues involving civil and human rights. Tonight, the topic that we're going to be sharing through music is one of the 21st century human rights issue, and that's human trafficking. I had the opportunity to offer remarks at the 3 o'clock program, and I assure you, you are in for a treat. I won't say anything more than that. I've said to a few people, I promise you, if you are not out of your seat and on your feet, or if you are not clapping while seated, I don't know what else we can do for you. <laughs> I really don't. It is Fabulous. It is a fabulous gift. We have the gift, of course, Rodney Whitaker, director of MSU's Jazz Studies program. Along with Rodney Whitaker, we have the professors of jazz, and I assure you, you're going to have a couple of opportunities this evening to witness magnificence. And of course, we have our Jazz Orchestra One and our students who truly are this generation and the next generation of jazz professionals. Their gift of genius, honestly, tonight, I don't know, as I said at the close of the three o'clock performance, I don't know what else to say other than you need to give them a round of applause. There's at least two or three people that I'd also like to acknowledge, one of them, of course, being Dean Jean James Forger. I call him Jim Forger, but I would call him Dean James Forger, who, through his leadership in the College of Music, we have this opportunity this evening to present you with a magnificent commission piece by Billy Childs, the great and the incomparable Billy Childs. I also want to acknowledge, when we talk about this issue of human trafficking, Oftentimes, there are unknown individuals who are behind the scenes who give so much of their time, their life, their commitment. One of those being Jane White, who is the director and the leader of the Michigan Human Trafficking Task Force. And I know she's out there, and I think we ought to give her applause for the work that she's doing. Thank you. Thank you. And of course, I want to echo the remarks that were mentioned earlier in terms of giving thanks to President Luana K. Simon and Dr. Roy Simon for their gift of this commissioned work. Do you know my name? So without further ado, let us proceed. And I would like to introduce to you Dean Jim Forger. I too would like to thank uh, Jane White and uh, a good friend and colleague. Uh, when I speak about Mark Sullivan, uh, I frequently say every college needs to have one Molotov cocktail thrower. And uh, Mark thinks big, and Mark has big ideas, and he's done a lot to facilitate this project. I'm grateful to him, and I know many colleagues at Michigan State University who are grateful to him. Uh, well, it's 11 degrees outside, and we're grateful that you're here, and these talented uh, colleagues on the stage will warm this room up in just a moment. My job at this moment is to give just a few brief comments to put the first six pieces in context. We will then have an opportunity to hear from the great Billy Childs, who will introduce the feature work, the uh, wonderful commission, uh, prior to the performance. But we have six works prior to that uh, in celebration of the birthday of the great Martin Luther King Jr. 
The first work on the program is Molasses Dripping on Magnolias. In 1946, Duke Ellington unveiled the Deep South Suite. This was a complicated time in African American history coming right after the victory in World War II. Yet African American soldiers who had fought so bravely for their country came back to the same kinds of discrimination they had experienced before their years of fighting on behalf of their country. <clears throat> slowly things began to change. Like molasses, you get it? Slowly things began to change, and this feeling is reflected in the movement Molasses Dripping on Magnolias from the Deep South Suite. The second work on the program is A Change is Gonna Come was written by Sam Cooke and released in December 1964. This song was inspired by various personal events in Cooke's life, most notably an event in which he and his companions were turned away from a whites-only motel in Louisiana. A Change is Gonna Come became an anthem for the American Civil Rights Movement. Sam Cooke donated the royalties from this work to the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. The third work on tonight's program will be Down South Camp Meeting with its call and response sections. Uh, it was about people of all races, creed, and color united under the banner of swing. Although this piece was written by Fletcher Henderson, it was made famous by the Benny Goodman Orchestra. Alabama is the next piece on the program. It's a composition written by the great John Coltrane. It was written in response to the 16th Street Baptist Church bombing on September 15, 1963, an attack by the Ku Klux Klan in Birmingham, Alabama, that killed four young women. Some historians argue that the melody was based on Martin Luther King's eulogy for these four women. This work first appeared on Coltrane's 1963 album, Live at Birdland. Next, we move to I Wish I Knew What It Means to Be Free, it was written by the American jazz pianist, composer, broadcaster, and educator, Dr. Billy Taylor. Dr. Taylor performed this song many times at King's rallies, and it served as an anthem for the civil rights movement throughout the 1960s. On request, Dr. King would say, Dr. Taylor, why don't you play me that Baptist hymn you wrote? And these men and women will play this Baptist hymn for us tonight. And then finally, perhaps the most well-known uh, protest song, We Shall Overcome, was the key anthem for the civil rights movement and nonviolent civil rights activism. It received further widespread acclaim through performances by folk singers such as Pete Seeger and Joan Baez. So with that, uh, would you uh, join me in welcoming to the stage a gentleman who has really built one of the best jazz programs in the United States, a person who is a leader in the College of Music and on this campus, University Distinguished Professor Rodney Whitaker.
Thank, I hope you are, are you enjoying the performance tonight so far? We are, um, we, uh, I, I remember about a year and a half ago, I had a meeting with Mark Sullivan, who has been a longtime collaborator with the Jazz Studies area, and uh, of course, our Dean Forger, and I always say to folks, don't commit to an idea that you don't want to see through, because the Dean will make it happen. He'll push it to the end and make sure it happens. And, and uh, we talked about bringing in a composer to write a project to compose music on the subject of human trafficking. And the first person that came to mind, I said, we got to get Billy Childs. There's nobody else. Billy Childs, we got to get him. He's an amazing composer, arranger, pianist, everything. And um, as a young jazz musician, he was a guy that I discovered when I was a teenager, and I was in love with his arrangements, his playing, everything. And he's a, I got a chance to meet him about 30 years ago, and is an upstanding guy, beautiful human being. He's got the whole thing covered, and I thought he would be the guy. How about a round of applause for our amazing guest artist, Mr. Billy Childs. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Wow. Man, well, um, when I got the call to do this, I was truly honored um, because this is such an important topic, uh, the topic of human trafficking, and I was really honored to be chosen um, to compose a piece um, that had such weight. And, um, you know, it, and it made me, in my research about it, it made me have to go um, and really explore um, through conversations and through, you know, looking online and reading articles and stuff, uh, it made me had to, it made me <clears throat> stop, stop thinking of it um, uh, just as a cursory, um, you know, abstract concept, oh, trafficking is, ter trafficking is terrible, and just go on about my business. I actually went and, and uh, started really considering um, what the, the implications and how devastating it is for the lives of the people, the victims of it. And it really had a profound emotional impact on me. Um, so I thank you for, you know, uh, this uh, creating a situation where I got to grow also. Um, this band has been amazing. Um, this piece, uh, Took me a long time, a lot of thought, you know, um, and a lot of hours, a lot of thinking about it, a lot of writing, and so they didn't get the music um, very early, uh, and they, but they got it together. <laughs> yeah, see them laughing, you know, um, but they got it together so quickly and so beautifully that it sounds like they've been, you know, playing it for years. Um, <clears throat> And, um, you know, what I wanted to do in this piece was, um, because it's such um, a difficult topic and such a, um, a very serious topic um, and very dark, um, uh, I wanted to approach it emotionally from the emotional standpoint of um, the point of view of someone who is a victim crying out to the world. Uh, about their invisibility, about their uh, being victimized. Um, and so that's why I titled the piece, Do You Know My Name? Because in a lot of instances, you don't even know their name. You don't know that uh, you're walking down the street next to someone who is you know, in a situation where they're a slave, um, a modern day 21st century slave, but a slave nonetheless. And um, so I wanted to call it, Do You Know My Name? Uh, and it starts out with a cry um, to the world about um, the terribleness of the situation. And then I wanted to, um, because I remain an optimist, I wanted to create a, like a, a scenario where this, the, the resilience sh uh, shines through and um, the, um, 
the dignity is still remaining even though you're going through these uh, trials and tribulations, you retain your dignity. Um, and so I wanted to do that and hopefully um, we will have captured that. And to help us um, and convey this message um, and express this piece, we have an incredible singer who's gonna sing the song with us. Um, how about a nice round of applause for Alicia Olatuja.
look into my eyes Tell me what you see
have grown thick, tough with age. She's showing her scars. There's the spot where she was hurt when she was young. There's the wrinkles born of joy, grief, worry, and pain. and moved to a different place. New tender leaves are emerging. She's taking chances, living, dreaming, hoping. She will bloom again. How about another round of applause for Billy Childs? Alicia Olatuja. One more time, Bebop Spartans. Thank you, thank you. Hope you enjoyed the performance. One more time, Billy Childs. Alicia Olatuja. Did I not promise you? Did I not promise you a wonderful evening? Did you have a wonderful evening? All right. I said earlier this afternoon there was very little that I could say other than, and I'm going to say it again just as I said it earlier today, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> to the amazing Jazz Orchestra One. There's none better than this, you know that, yes. And of course, but for the support of Dean Forger, and of course the leadership of Rodney Whitaker, tonight would not have been. Is that correct? Can I get it? Yes. I also want to say thank you to Anicia, Sam Cooke, change gonna come. You could feel it, couldn't you? Yes. And Diego Rivera, none like him. 
unique in his own style. And then, of course, like my good friend Rodney, I felt the same way about We Shall Overcome, but I've never heard We Shall Overcome in the 21st century rendition. Did you enjoy it? I think that shall become the next anthem for the movement. And of course, when I think about this evening, but for the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, and I felt it was important as we think about the 21st century form of slavery. Dr. King made reference to slavery both in his speeches and in the words that he wrote. He, he wrote about how blacks often thought of themselves as inferior and accepted injustice and exploitation. That slaves were considered a thing to be used, not a person to be respected. He wrote and spoke about nonviolent resistance as leading to the creation of what he often referred to as the beloved community. Today, when we talk about civil and human rights, you won't forget human trafficking as a form of slavery. For those of you who may not have thought much about it, as you heard the incomparable Billy Childs, he gave his reflection on how he evolved to understand the subject and the responsibility each of us has to engage in efforts to eliminate human trafficking. And I want to know, is Jane still out there with us? I see you. I hope you are proud of us tonight. I thought you might. To Jane, the director of the Michigan Human Trafficking Task Force, she is relentless. And to Mark Sullivan, thank you so much for making sure that we did our work. And to all of you, we thank you for coming tonight. And if you would join me once again in thanking, and I'm asking him to come to the stage, Rodney Whitaker.